It's time to end violence the proper way. Before we begin talking about violence, what is the actual definition of violence? Well, violence is defined by the World Health Organization as intentional use of physical force or power, threatened or actual, against oneself, another person, or against a group or community that either results in or has a high likelihood of resulting in injury, death, psychological harm, maldevelopment, or deprivation. What are the causes of violence? Well, one of the biggest causes of violence is actually lack of attention or respect. A person that has low self-esteem or self-worth may actually use violence to feel better about themselves. If a person has experienced any form of abuse or neglect, they may act with violence. Violence could also come from being a witness to violence in the home, the community, and online. For example, if you're growing up in your gang and they're committing crimes, you may be influenced by that. One of the biggest causes of violence is actually the influence from peers and adults. For example, let's say your peers or friends are bullying someone. You may be inclined or influenced to join them to look cooler. What are the actual examples of violence? Well, one of the biggest examples of violence is actually domestic violence. This happens almost every single day and it's really tragic. Mood swings are a major example of violence. One second a person is happy, the next they are angry, then they act in violent ways, such as hitting another human being, throwing things against the wall, in all, it's just a violent and terrible situation. Lack of power and greed forces violent actions on some people. For example, a person may bribe another human being, or they may act in a violent way such as robbing a bank, robbing a grocery store, or hurting another person so they could get more wealthy or more in power. Alcohol could be a reason for violence. For example, if a person drinks too much and they get too intoxicated, they may act unnaturally, such as fighting another human being. For example, bar fights, that's usually caused when multiple people are intoxicated and they lose their cool and they start fighting and multiple people get hurt and sometimes death may actually happen, which is really tragic and sad. Some people are claiming violence is caused by video games. Now let's look at some statistics. Uh, according to IGN's article, they state a new report by DFC Intelligence has revealed that as of mid-2020, there are nearly 3.1 billion global video game consumers. With nearly 8 billion people around the world, this means that about 40% of our population plays video games of some form. Honestly, that's a crazy number, and 3.1 billion people are not criminals, so. A lot of different types of people actually play video games. It could be a lawyer, it could be a cashier, it could be a young child, it could be a senior citizen. A lot of people actually play video games. In fact, police officers, one of the highest ranking positions in the community, play video games with citizens to connect and bond. Grand Theft Auto, a video game, is one of the most violent video games in the world. In the video game, it actually lets you become a criminal and li live out your darkest criminal fantasies. But if you actually ever played the video game, it's actually so unrealistic and fake that it doesn't teach people how to be violent. It just lets them enact their fantasies because they can't actually do it in real life. Politicians such as Hillary Clinton and President Trump have been trying to blame violence and school shootings on video games. This argument is not justified at all and is completely wrong. Politicians should not be blaming video games for school shootings. In fact, they should look at a real way to prevent gun violence which is occasional mental health 
for checkups to make sure a mentally ill individual doesn't get a hold of a weapon. But how do we stop violence? It all starts with what we teach our youth, which we have to teach our youth proper ethics, honesty, integrity, and respect. It's time to take a stand. We have to end violence now. Parents and guardians can't be afraid to punish children who act in violent ways. It is better to punish a child when they are younger so they learn. If you ignore violent actions from children, you're condoning the actual violence. Society has to teach everyone that making the right decision at certain times is always better than making the wrong decision. Doing the right thing in life will lead to success. Through more punishment and fear of consequences, society will start to make better choices. Choices that don't include violence. Choices that will lead to happiness instead of death. Now that I gave you my perspective on violence, I have a question for you. What can we do together to end violence? My name is Peter Cleaver and thank you for listening.